Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my signature online coaching program, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. If you would like to learn more about my program, Irresistible You, and see if you're a good fit for enrollment, please schedule a free confidence clarity call at irresistibleicing.com slash call. The link is also in the show notes. All right, let's dive in and get started with today's episode. So in today's episode, I am going to be teaching you the five things that BS diets are not teaching you. <laughs> and um, we're going to dive into that. And before we, we do that, here's what I want to say. So if you are not a member of our free podcast discussion group on Facebook, make sure that you go and join that. The link is in the show notes. Or if you just go onto your Facebook app or uh, web browser, you can type in Irresistible You, and then you'll see the Irresistible You podcast discussion group request to join. And when you request to join, there's a series of questions that you have to answer so that I can approve you uh, into the group. And as I was um, going through, a, it was like over 150 requests to join the other day. <laughs> and I was going through these and looking at, because I read every single response, I read all of them. And as I was looking through those, it kind of really hit me why and how much you need to be number one in the free group, but why so many of you would also benefit from joining my online program as well. And so I thought this would be a great opportunity to speak more on what is the program? What is it that I'm always talking about? Because I've also seen people that think the free group is the program, and it's not. <laughs> so I want to get some, set some, some things straight, give you some clarity around what the program is versus the free podcast. What are the things that I teach you? Because they are the five things that bullshit diets are never going to teach you how to do. Okay. And what I found super interesting as I'm going through the responses uh, one of the questions that I ask in the group is, you know, why did you join the group? Something like that. What did you hope to learn from the group or why did you join the group? Something along those lines. And, you know, 99% of the time, the answers are something like, I just want to feel good about myself. I just want to feel confident. I'm sick of hiding in my life. I want to finally, like, live my life. It's always answers like that cool. That's exactly what I'm here to do. I'm here to show you how to do. And then I ask people, um, I think one of the other questions is like, what's your number one struggle when it comes to body image and confidence or something like that? And the answers that I always get are typically, not all of them, but they are typically my weight. My number one struggle with body image is my weight, my fat stomach, my thighs. And I actually had done a podcast episode on this. I think it was called Body Image is Not Your Weight. And I talked a lot about that as well, how when we talk about body image, it's not about your weight. It's what you think the weight means to you. So there's that one. And then when I ask, what have you tried? Most of the responses are usually, you know, everything, right? Every diet, every pill, every, you know, crazy workout, like everybody's doing those things. So what I want to call out, and I'm not doing this to, to be mean in any way, because when I see these answers, I'm like, ah, I can help you, <laughs> right? Like, I know I can help you with this. So when you think about you telling yourself, I would just want to feel good in my own skin. I want to feel really good about myself. I want to feel confident. And then when I ask you, well, what have you tried? Diets, deprivation, starvation, pills, extreme exercise. Those so-called solutions 
are never going to give you what it actually is that you want. And what's very interesting is the ladies that join my free group, nobody really, I don't, it's, I've never seen this. Nobody answers that first question with, I want to lose 80 pounds. I want to lose 60 pounds. You answer it with, which I love this, I want to feel good about myself. I want to feel confident in my own skin. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to spend years waiting to love myself. I'm actually scroll because I we track all of this, and I'm actually going through and reading some of your real responses. I want to feel empowered in my journey to self love. I want to start loving me now. I want to learn how to love myself. I want to learn how to build my confidence and learn how to love and accept myself. So I think by now you're starting to get a pattern here of what it is you really want for yourself. Um, You know, it's never about, oh, I just want to lose 80 pounds. And then when I say, well, what's your biggest struggle with body image? So many of you answer that question, well, my weight my weight. Um, Not everyone answers it that way, but the majority of the answers are usually um, my belly, my weight, um, I'm fat, things like that. And when I ask what you've tried, dieting, exercise, keto, different types of diets, uh, what haven't I tried, (laughs) everything, um, weight loss plans. I'm just kind of reading through some of the responses here. And that's a contradiction, right? Because if you just want to feel good in your own skin and you want to learn how to love yourself, well, I'm going to let you know real quick that you're never going to learn how to love yourself by going on another bullshit diet. You know, learning what ketones are and keto and what carbs are good and what carbs are bad and what are my good foods and what are my bad foods. None of that is ever going to be helpful in your journey to self-love because all of those diets, all they do is reinforce, I'm a good girl if I eat like this And I'm a bad, nasty piece of shit if I continue to eat like that. That is all that is reinforcing to your brain. And so if you're actually seeking to feel good about yourself, to feel confident in yourself, to have love for yourself, continuing to follow some bullshit diet plan that is telling you you're good or you're bad if you do this or that, that's never going to give you the outcome that you want. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. And so I see so many of you continuing to go after the new shiny object, the new shiny diet, because you still have this self-belief that, well, if I just do this, it's going to fix me. If I could just, fo- if I could just follow the diet, I would, be, I would be skinny and I would feel good about myself. And so you continue to look for those new shiny diet objects, and then you continue to look at your own circumstances and blame your circumstances on why you are where you are in the first place. Well, if COVID didn't happen, I wouldn't have gained back all my weight. Well, here's a newsflash. COVID-19 has nothing to do with the fact that you've gained weight. The fact that you've gained weight has everything to do with the way you think and feel about yourself. It has everything to do with the fact that you don't have any other coping mechanisms besides emotional eating. It has nothing to do with the circumstance. Because circumstances are going to continue to roll on in your life, girl. Like, they're going to keep happening. Here we are in a pandemic. Where are we going to be five years from now? You're going to have your own personal things that come up, your own personal traumas, your own personal family tragedies. How are you going to be dealing with those things? And so when you're following these bullshit diets, you're constantly trying to do things in a bubble. Well, if everything goes good, then I can be good and then I can follow the plan. But the minute things go south, the minute life punches me in the gut, if that wouldn't have happened, 
if so-and-so wouldn't have invited me out for happy hour, I would have been able to stick to my diet. Like, oh no, I have a friend that likes to hang out with me and invited me to go out for drinks. That has nothing to do with you continuing on the yo-yo diet body hate shame cycle. It has everything to do with you and the way you think and feel about yourself. And so the issue with these bullshit diets, these fad diets, these yo-yo diets, is they don't teach you how to think and feel about yourself. All they do is continue to reinforce that you are the shittiest person in the world because you can't lose weight. That's all they're doing is that if if you continue to eat bananas and grapes, you're just going to be a fat pig the rest of your life because, oh, my God, who's going to eat fruit? Like there's actual diets like this. And I I have to go back and find that episode, too. I did an episode about a actual nutritionist who like (gasps) was like gasping and clutching all her pearls because I told her I was eating grapes for a snack. Are you fucking kidding me right now? I grew up, I don't even think I had a banana until I was a grown-ass adult. So for me to be eating fruit as an adult, that's a big win, (laughs) okay? And anybody, I don't care if they're a so-called medical professional or a bullshit diet plan is going to tell you that fruit is not okay. There is something like seriously flawed in that plan. So anyway... These diets that you're, you know, jumping after and your heart rate goes up because you see this and you see this before and after like infomercial at two o'clock in the morning because you can't eat because you're, you know, stuff in your face and you're like, oh, that's the saving grace. Yes, that's it. That's going to save me from myself. I'm going to love myself because I'm finally going to be skinny on this six week diet plan. And then it doesn't happen. And then what do you do? You think, oh my God, see, I'm such a failure. I'm just such a fat pig who's never going to amount to anything. I can't do anything right. I can't ever follow a plan. Here I go again. I'm starting over. I suck, blah, 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 blah. And the thing is, is you're seeking what you came to feel, which is, I want to feel good about myself. I want to feel empowered. I want to feel confident. I want to be in control of my life. But the way that you're seeking to do that is not the right way. (laughs) And I can speak from experience that you will never find those feelings that you're craving. That's why I talk about the life that you crave. You will never seek that through your actual dieting. So you have these cravings for sugar or food or overeating or whatever. You're actually craving something more for yourself. You're craving those feelings of empowerment and confidence and worthiness and love. And those cravings will never be satisfied in the food. Ever. And they sure as shit are never going to be satisfied in deprivation dieting. Ever. Ever. If, if you're relying on a diet that tells you you're a shitty person because you're going to eat a banana and go have drinks with your friends during happy hour, please explain to me how that is empowering. Please explain to me how that is making you in charge of your own life. Please explain to me how that makes you the boss of your own destiny. It doesn't. And so it gets me so fired up. And this is why I do what I do and teach what I teach because these diets are so effing flawed because they're never going to teach you how to think and feel about yourself. They're never going to teach you how to change those things. Because a matter of fact, the diet industry, they want you to feel this way. They're cashing in on you feeling this way. If they can continue to make you feel like shit about yourself, to make you keep chasing the next shiny bullshit diet, well, guess what? They're winning and you're not. And so when I really had to reevaluate my own journey and my own yo-yo diet, body hate, shame cycle syndrome and came to this epiphany and this realization that 
here I had been living this life where I thought I was such a failure. I thought I was such a loser that kept chasing after the next shiny diet and I could never stick to it and I could never make anything work because I was choosing things that aren't intended to work because I had never fixed the underlying issues. You know, I say it all the time on the podcast and I say it all the time to my students and my group that your weight, that's why I said your weight isn't the problem. So when you answer the question, and I'm not faulting anybody because you don't know this yet. You don't know what you don't know, so it's not your fault, <laughs> right? You don't know what you don't know, and you've been like, your brain has been like ingrained with this information from the diet industry. And so when you say my number one challenge with body image is my weight, that's where I'm going to have to call you out. And we're going to, we're going to talk about it in, in like the most loving, respectful way possible because weight is not the problem. Weight is the manifestation of the bigger issue. And it just so happens that weight um, is physical. So you can see it. I can see it. Strangers can see it. People can see the weight. So it feels like, and it like really does feel like that's the biggest issue that you have because it's obvious. It's on your body, right? Where other things that people might be doing, you know, um, certain types of drugs or drinking, um, they can maybe have it to a level where nobody really knows. But eventually it, it all blows up and everybody, you know, the symptoms of the show. But you know what I'm saying? Like weight feels like it's the biggest problem. But I promise you it's a symptom of something else. It's a symptom of what it is you're actually avoiding. It's the symptom of blocking those real things that you crave for yourself. Because as long as you focus on the weight, you have an excuse as to why you don't feel empowered confident, loving, worthy, all of those things. Because the weight takes up all of your um, mental energy. It's your obsession, so to speak. And so if you keep focusing on the diets, why the diet didn't work, or, oh, I couldn't stick to this diet. It's this, like, all of your attention and all of your focus goes to that. And because there's other issues underneath of that that you're just not willing to deal with. But if you were just willing to go there and deal with those things, that's what we call emotional weight. If you were willing to deal with the emotional weight, then you'd be where you want to be and you'd feel how you want to feel, right? So, you know, as I had my epiphany and came into my journey and realized that you know, I had been on this hamster wheel my entire life that I could look at any, I don't care what picture you give me, I can look at any picture from any point in my lifetime and I can tell you how much I weighed, what diet was I on, what was I thinking and feeling about the diet at the time, and how was I thinking and feeling based on where I was in the weight loss. You know, and I can remember times where, you know, maybe my weight loss stalled or I put on another five pounds and I was in the deepest, darkest dungeon mentally because I thought, oh my God, everybody's going to know. And let me just tell you this, put your mind at ease. If you've put on five, 10 pounds, <laughs> nobody knows and nobody gives a shit either. And that's one of the things is, you know, when we're so wrapped up in our, our feelings about what the weight means and the judgments we have about ourselves and the judgments we create from other people, what they must be thinking, that is all ego-driven because it's all about you, 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 and what everybody else must be thinking about you. We talk a lot about that in the program too, <laughs> um, about ego. But you know, as I went through my journey and I realized, oh my God, like this is not okay, that I've been basing all of my happiness around, is the scale going down? Are my pants going down? Because if they're not, then I must be a horrible person and I was like in a bad mood that day. So as I got into my journey and thought, okay, you know, you're not going to find this happiness in another like yo-yo diet. It's just not going to happen. So what is it that you need to do? 
And that is how the Irresistible You coaching program, what is now the Irresistible You coaching program, came into existence. It came into existence because I discovered what those five missing components are. That I don't care what diet plan you're on, you're never going to learn these things. Okay? And so that's what I teach inside my program. So for those of you that maybe weren't sure what the program is or you have confusion, this is where I'm going to break it down for you. This is a paid program. This is a program where in order to enroll in the program, we have to have a conversation first. That's why I offer the free confidence clarity calls because those calls are for you and I both because it's collaborative. It's for both of us to determine if that's going to be a good fit for you. Because not every person I speak to do I invite to enroll in the program. The people that I want in the program are people that are, first of all, have to be ready. Second of all, are committed to themselves, are ready to show up, are ready to like make this change and this transformation in their life. And so, you know, it's just important that I ensure for for you, also for other people in the program, because you get that support with other women in the program, I like to make sure that it's a good fit for both of us, okay? So if, as you're listening to this, if you're curious to learn more, if you want to find out if it's a good fit for you, then that's where you would sign up for a free confidence clarity call at irresistibleicing.com slash call, okay? That link is also in the show notes as well. And you pick your date and time that works for you. You and I will get on a call. We have a lot of fun. We talk about your goals. What are you envisioning for yourself? And then we determine if based on all of that, is Irresistible You a good fit for you? And if it is, we'll talk more about the next steps on the call. Okay. So in the podcast today, what I would like to do is share with you the five guiding principles that are the methodology of the program. So the way that I teach my students, the way that I coach, are based on these five guiding principles. And these five guiding principles are those five missing components that BS diets will never teach you, okay? And everything in the program is centered around these guiding principles. And I decided to call them guiding principles because they're not linear steps, okay? It's not like you go through step one, you check the box, and you never have to do it again, right? This is a process. These are guiding principles that guide the way that you live your life. I live my life this way. I practice these things every single day. And I always will. I always will. Okay. So let's get into those. Okay. So number one, guiding principle number one. Um, So in the program, the program currently is 12 weeks long. It's an online program where you go through and do all of the self-studies. You watch videos. You have self-reflection. You have workbook activities. And then once a week, we have a live call on Zoom. And that call on Zoom is a coaching call. So it's where you bring your questions to me. I coach you through different scenarios, um, you know, things like that. And then we also have a private Facebook group, which is for students only. And every single day in the group, we're interacting, we're posting about things. That's how we hold each other accountable. That's how you get direct access to me. Um, I am in there every single day answering questions, offering support. And so it's this really comprehensive program where you've got this great blend of, you know, online learning at your own pace. You've got live coaching that you do with me and you have daily interaction, not only with myself, but from other ladies um, that are in the group that understand you know and what's so cool about that is I've seen friendships build that people that never knew each other before that you know have this um this thing in common or they're both going through similar issues in their own life at the same time and it's just such a great support system so that's kind of logistically how it works and so let's dive into those five those five components okay so guiding principle number one is called break the rules all right. So when we when we focus on the content and the training and the coaching around break the rules, this is what it's about. So every single one of you that are listening to this, 
you have created a playbook of rules that control the way you think about yourself and the way you live your life. And in order to become irresistible you, you have to break those rules holding you back. So let's talk about, first of all, to become irresistible you, what does that mean? Because people say, what do you mean an irresistible life? Irresistible you, what is that? So an irresistible life, becoming irresistible you, is when you create the life you crave. So that life that you envision for yourself, that life that you crave where you feel empowered, you feel confident, you feel worthy, you feel loved, all of those things that you think about that you you really, really crave and want for yourself, that's your definition of what it means to become irresistible you. So one of the things I have the girls do in the very first week of the program is we do some exercises around who do you want to become? What is your version of irresistible you? And they write this letter to their future self and they like in detail really think about who they want to become because that's super important. Um, Because in order to become the version of yourself that you crave, you have to first break the rules you've built. And all of us have rules that we have built that we don't even realize we have. And these rules come from um, experiences that you've had, if you were bullied, if you've had traumas, if you've had you know, relationships with parents and family and friends, things that were said to you, also things that weren't said to you that you needed to hear. Um, society, you know, just there's all these places in this where all of these different rules come from. And they've just created the way you live and you don't realize it because you've been zombie walking. So your current state, we talk about this in the program too, is if you're zombie walking, which you're kind of like a zombie literally in the walking dead, that's like, Oh, and you're not like, (laughs) you're not, um, you know, you're not awake. You're not awake to what's going on. You have just accepted. Well, this is just how I am. All my family's like this, so I guess I'm like this. And you don't question, you don't try to break any of those rules, okay? And so what we do in the program is we take you from that to a place of radical self-awareness. Radical self-awareness means you are like waking up and realizing and becoming so radically self-aware of how you talk to yourself, how you think about yourself, what rules you're creating, and then we have the how. So in the program, we have the how, and we have a very specific strategy. It's called the own it method. And you'll hear me on coaching calls. I'm like, girl, go get your own it method worksheet because we got to work through those bullshit thoughts that you're having. So the own it method is how I have the students, the ladies, work through their BS thoughts. Because the thing is, And this is what a diet, I'm telling you, you will not learn this in a diet. (laughs) Your thoughts that you have about yourself become your feelings. And your feelings become your actions. So if you look around your life and you don't like where you are, it's a culmination of your actions. And if you break back down your actions, your actions come from the way you think and feel about yourself. So in this process, we learn how to break the thoughts, how to break the rules. So that's guiding principle number one, break the rules. And that's why I said earlier, it's not a linear process, right? It's not like they learn how to break the rules and then they never have to do it again. You know, even when you go through the the 12 weeks of the program and you've really learned these techniques, You're not going to go the rest of your life and never have another shitty thought. But once you've gone through the program, you have the tools and resources under your belt to, number one, be radically self-aware that you're having those thoughts. And then you you have a process and a strategy on how to change them. Versus if you don't have these skills and you don't even know how to do it and you don't even realize that you're doing it, You're just having these really shitty thoughts and beliefs about yourself and just going, well, if I could just lose the weight, it would fix everything. 
See what I'm saying? And the diet's never going to teach you how to actually get under the problem because the weight is not the problem. The weight is a symptom. The weight is a symptom of how you think and feel about yourself. Okay? So number two, guiding principle number two is called make confidence queen. And here's the thing about confidence. Confidence doesn't just show up because we wish for it. Okay? Confidence doesn't come from some stupid ass affirmations in the mirror. Okay? (laughs) It is built by taking imperfect action. And we have to take imperfect action before we feel ready because we're never going to feel ready. Okay. So the thing about confidence, the fastest path to confidence is to take imperfect action and to stop quitting on yourself. The fastest path to confidence is to do what you say you're going to do over and over and over. Because here's the thing. When you have lived your life on the yo-yo diet, body, hate, shame cycle, you have taught yourself, I can't be trusted. I can't stick to anything. I can't trust myself. Right? Because you go on these diets and then you quit on yourself because they're too freaking hard. They're too restrictive. They're not realistic. But then you blame yourself that you're not good enough that you're an idiot, you're this, you know, horrible person because you can't stick to a diet that doesn't want you to eat bananas and grapes. And so you have completely ruined the trust you have with yourself, which in turn means you don't have confidence in yourself. That's why I say the fastest path to confidence is you have to learn how to trust and believe in yourself again. And the way that you do that is to do what you say you're going to do and take in perfect action every single day. And what does that mean? That means showing up for yourself. It means you stop quitting on yourself. It means you show up for yourself, whether you feel like being there or not. Like I tell the ladies in the program, I'm like, you're going to have weeks where you're not going to want to come to a coaching call. Not because you're busy, not because you have a prior engagement, because you're like scared to be here. Because you don't feel good enough. You don't feel like you've done the work. And the worst thing you could do is to quit on yourself and not show up. If anything, it's the days where you are resisting it more. the most is the day that you need to show up. I said, I don't care if you just come into the Facebook group and put a post and say, I need help. I'm really struggling today. And we're going to throw you a lifeboat. And we're going to help you out. But nobody can help you out if you don't show up and let us know, okay? Um, And so we have a, um, each guiding principle that I speak on, there is a very specific strategy um, and process that's used to do the how, right? To do the how of, of that guiding principle. And so we also, we have that and then we have a bonus within the program on how to become a confidence queen. (laughs) And confidence queen follows the acronym CROWN. And so when you go through the program, you get to learn what that means and how to implement. Because I'm I'm the type of person, the way I teach is very action focused. I'm not gonna just sit around and teach you a bunch of fluff. That is not helpful, okay? The way that I teach is to give you actionable items that you can implement in your life. Because if you're not able to implement and take action, what's the point, (laughs) right? What's the point? So that is the way that I teach in my program. It's very effective. And so let's move to guiding principle number three. Guiding principle number three is called feed your soul, okay? And in this principle, the students learn that losing physical weight alone you know, just going on this other, you know, shiny diet or whatever is not going to equal automatic happiness if you have a starved soul. And so for most of you, when you're going on these bullshit diets and you're following these dumb keto plans or restrictive plans or whatever the hell it is that you're doing, the diet of the moment, right? Um, we talked about this at the beginning of the, of the podcast is like what you really want is empowerment, confidence, worthiness, self-love, to feel good about yourself, right? That's what your soul is craving. We talked about, remember we talked about cravings? 
what you're craving is that life that you're envisioning for yourself, that life where, you know, and that's why we really go into that exercise about what is it that you want? What are the real cravings that you have? You know, and for some people it's like, you know, things like I just crave to like wear a bathing suit for the first time. I just crave to go to the beach with my kids because I always tell them no. I crave to go horseback riding like I did when I was a little girl. I crave to wear the sexy black dress now. I also have things like in the program and ladies where it's like, I crave to have a family and I'm hesitant because of my size. So we talk about some serious stuff here and it's like, those are the things that your soul is craving, that it wants, the way that it wants to feel, the way that it wants to live, the life that you wish you could have, that you crave so hard for yourself. And that's why I say those cravings will never be satisfied with food or dieting. And so in this in this um, principle, we talk about, you know, if you're – if your um, identity has always been trying to cure those cravings with the diets, right? Um, you have what we call the fat girl identity. That's all you've ever known. That's how you see the world. That's the lens that you live in. And so your identity is around, I'm just the fat girl. I'm always the fat friend. I just expect to not be able to wear the things. I just expect there to be a weight limit. I just expect to live really small. And I'm going to play small so I can make myself appear small because that's what I, I want. I wish I was small. So if I just play it small. So it's like this whole identity that's wrapped up in it. And the problem is that you don't have a relationship with yourself. Your relationship is built around whether or not you're good enough from the diet. Am I eating good or bad today? Did I lose weight? If I lost weight, I'm good. If I didn't lose weight, I'm bad. It goes back to that thing, right? Where it's like you're basing whether or not you're a good person on if you lost five fucking pounds or not. I mean, think about it. Think about it. Logically, we all know it's like ridiculous, but emotionally, it feels like that's the right thing to be doing. And so what we have to do is we have to create an unconditional loving relationship with you that is not based on dieting, that is not based on food, that is not rooted in what it means to be the quote-unquote fat girl. What does it mean to just be you? What do you like to do? What do you love? What lights you up? What fills you up? What is it that makes you feel alive? And then we learn that because, and in the program, I, I teach it like this. I said, you know, it's like you're dating yourself. And when you're dating someone for the first time, what do you do? You spend time together. You get to know one another. You get to figure out what do they like? What do they, what do they not like? What do we like to do together? And how many times in your own life have you dated yourself? Probably never. So you get to learn, what do I really like? Not what my kids want, not what my parents want, not what my partner wants. What do I want? What do I like to do? Because for a lot of you too, when you've lived this, this world where you're playing it small, you hide behind other people also, right? You hide behind other people and you just kind of go along with whatever your partner wants to do or whoever their friends are instead of who are you and what do you want for yourself, okay? So we talk about, you know, there's, again, every single um, guiding principle has a specific strategy that you're able to use and you're able to use it the rest of your life. Okay, so ultimately in that principle, we learn how to go from having a starved soul to how to create an unconditional loving relationship with ourself that is not attached to being the, the quote unquote fat girl. Okay, so guiding principle number four, that one is called be in the moment. Listen, the emotions, <laughs> as you embark on this journey to become irresistible you, 
okay? The emotions that come up are not glittery, magical rainbows and unicorns. Some of them will be, but the majority of the emotions that are going to come up, they're not magic glitter, okay? Because that's the thing, right? If I tell you weight is a symptom, it's a symptom of what you're avoiding, and what you're avoiding is the emotional baggage that you're carrying on your body and your brain. And that emotional baggage is all the things that you think and feel about yourself. And the dieting is a distraction and a deflection from having to actually deal with those things. And so be in the moment is when you learn how to actually sit in the discomfort and we do that by practicing mindful acknowledgement. We don't do mindful acceptance, acknowledging it because discomfort is part of this process. And so that's the other thing I said that, you know, not everybody's a good fit for the program. If you're not willing to sit in your own discomfort, you're not going to be a good fit for the program because your avoidance of the discomfort and the uncomfortable feelings, that's the reason you're, you're at where you're at. Because again, why? The weight is a symptom. <laughs> and if you're not willing to sit in your own discomfort, and I mean really sit in it and feel it, then you won't be a good fit for the program. And that means you're not ready for the program. Because you're going to have those, all those things that you've been pushing down, that you've been avoiding, that you've been denying yourself. Well, guess what, honey? They're coming up. Because that's the emotional weight. That's what you have to lose. So as you can see, this isn't a, this isn't a diet. <laughs> this isn't some physical weight loss program. And I will say, though, if physical weight loss is a goal that you have, this is the work that has to come first. Because you're not going to find empowerment, confidence, worthiness, and love in losing your physical weight. We have to change the narrative as the scale goes down. And so in this principle, what we teach is how to be mindful, how to, be, how to practice mindful acknowledgement when those, when those feelings come up for you. How do we do that? Because when you, don't, when you don't know how to be in the moment, you're like mentally somewhere else. And so I'll give you a really great example of that. So it's like, Let's say you're going to a party tonight and you haven't tried on any outfits yet and you go to try on your outfits and you're like, oh my God, oh my God, how did this happen? I can't believe this doesn't fit. And you know that feeling, it's so humiliating, it's so defeating when every single thing in your closet, you go to put it on and it doesn't go over your hips it doesn't even want to go over your body or you put it on and it just, you're busting out the seams because you've gained back a ton of weight. And so you're just like now feeling hopeless, frustrated. You feel horrible about yourself. The guilt and the shame is like raining from the sky. And you're thinking of all the excuses of how you could get out of going. And let's say you can't get out of it for whatever reason and you go. And you go, and the entire time, you're just, like, so obsessed about how much weight you've, you've gained that that's what you're creating all these scenarios about what everybody else must be thinking about you because you're judging yourself that way, right? Where when we practice mindful acknowledgement, it doesn't mean that we, <laughs> the situation doesn't go away, <laughs> but what it means is say, okay, you know what? I gained back about 20 pounds and my clothes aren't fitting and I don't feel really good about this. It's not trying to force you to say that you have to feel good about it because you shouldn't feel good about it, but you're going to mindfully acknowledge this is what happened and I take responsibility for it because the weight didn't just pop back on your body, okay? So it's saying, all right, this is where I'm at and I'm either going to go to this party tonight and I'm going to be you know, zoned out, not paying attention, not being engaged with people, feeling sorry for myself, becoming the victim of my own circumstances, or I'm going to just acknowledge, all right, I gained back the weight. My clothes aren't fitting very well right now. 
I don't love how I look in the mirror, but I'm not going to let that stop me from being present and engaged at this party. Do you see the difference? The circumstance didn't change. How you think and feel is what we worry about. Where diet culture, it would be, oh my God, I can't believe I came back the weight. I just got to get this weight off. I got to just hustle my way through and I'm not going to eat or drink tonight. I'm going to be really strict. And then tomorrow I'm just going to go ham and I'm going to like get this weight off my body. Because you've always felt like the only way to get the weight off is to hustle and struggle your way down the scale, right? And so we just learn how to mindfully acknowledge wherever it is we are in our journey, whatever the situation is that's going on, okay? So that is number four. So let's move into guiding principle and the final guiding principle, number five, which is called get your glam on, okay? Here's the thing. To feel irresistible in your own skin, you must own the body you have now. Not the body you want to have 50 pounds from now. The body you have now. This means, you know, taking care of and dressing for the body you have right now, not the body you wish you had. So here's the thing with Get Your Glam On, okay? Diet culture has led you to believe that you can't look sexy, you can't dress cute, you can't look stylish, you can't look like you're feeling yourself unless you're in the after picture. And I despise before and after pictures. You guys that have been listening for a while, you know that. And these stupid ass diets and these commercials about diets, you know, the person that's overweight is like sad and like, oh, they like they just they over dramatize everything that's going on. The person who's skinny is like smiling and happy and running free and wearing the sexy clothes and their hair looks better. Their makeup looks better. And it's like, let's just call bullshit on bullshit. OK, because that and that is what. That's why I say like you don't know what you don't know and it's not your fault because diet culture, our society who is so freaking obsessed with size (laughs) has taught you that you're only deserving to take care of yourself physically when you're skinny. So long as you're fat, so long as you're overweight, you shouldn't put too much effort into yourself because And then you create, so here comes the rules, right? That's why I say these are not linear steps. They all feed into one another because here comes the rules telling you, well, if you look like you're feeling yourself and you're at that size, what are people going to think? They're going to think you're, like, here's the thoughts I used to have. Well, if, you know, if I'm like, you know, done up to the nines and all glammed up, but yet here I am overweight, people are going to think like, wow, you're okay being that size because you're actually putting a lot of effort into yourself otherwise. But if you're not putting enough effort into your weight, you must be okay being that fat. Like these are the real thoughts and stories that I used to create. And I know that you guys do it too. I know that you do. And it's like, here's the thing. (laughs) Weight loss is not a prerequisite to take care of yourself. Weight loss is not a prerequisite to go pamper yourself. Weight loss is not a prerequisite to love yourself. And if you continue to follow the bullshit diet culture, what they are doing is it is reinforcing into your brain, into your psyche, that you are only worthy of good things if you're skinny. And so, again, it goes back to, are you good or are you bad? And so it's teaching you that unless you lose the weight, then you don't deserve to, like, take better care of yourself. And what we're doing in this guiding principle is we are rewriting the script and saying, no, we're going to rewire our brains to believe and know that we deserve to pamper ourselves, to practice self-care, to dress the way we want to dress now 
so that we feel worthy and lovable no matter where the scale is. Because if you're only telling yourself, when I get to this size, I'll go get a pedicure. When I get to this size, I'll pamper myself. When I get to that size, I'll wear the cute clothes or the bathing suit. You are teaching yourself, I'm only worthy if I'm skinny. And here's the thing, guys. As women, we have one body, right? But this one body goes through several iterations throughout our lifetime. Whether you have a weight gain, you know, your weight is going to continue to fluctuate. It's not like you're going to continue to gain 100 pounds, but your weight fluctuates as hormones change, as you age, and our bodies change with age. So it's like if you're going to keep teaching yourself that you're only worthy of good things when you look a certain way, you're not going to break this cycle. And the whole goal of this program is to break the yo-yo diet body hate shame cycle. And so in this principle, what we talk about is, you know, we say get your glam on. That's my play on words, right? But what does glam mean to you? And we actually use glam as an acronym in the program. So one of the first things that we do is we define what is your version of glam? Because my version of glam, and y'all know me and my crystal and glitter and shit all over my nails, like that's not for everybody. <laughs> and I'm not saying anybody needs to look a certain way. It's what is what works for you. Are you a makeup girl? Are you a no makeup girl? What, what makes you feel like the most confident, powerful woman when you walk in a room? Because here's what I'm going to tell you. Rolling out of bed, throwing your hair in the messy bun for three days in a row, wearing the same pants that you've been wearing for three or four days, that is not making anybody feel powerful and confident, okay? So what is going to make you feel empowered and confident when you walk in a room? The way that, so here's the thing, it's like, you know, we're supposed to say, like I'm in air quotes over here, guys, we're supposed to say, looks don't matter. And it's like, yeah, but they do. So then I know every time I say that, people are clutching their pearls because here I am preaching self-love and (laughs) self-worth. And here's the thing. I don't think any of us need to fit into a mold. None of us need to fit a stereotype. None of us need to look or weigh a certain, a certain way. We need to break those, those boundaries and those, those rules, right? But the way that you package yourself, the way that you present yourself to the world matters. And it mostly matters to you. Because whether you want to believe it or not, when you walk into a room, people do judge. And if you want to be seen as confident, empowered, powerful, whatever those words are for you, the life you crave, is that how you're showing up? Right? Like, is that how you're showing up to the world? And number one, it's not about doing it for other people. It's about doing it for you. And so we talk a lot about, you know, what is your version of glam? What makes you feel really good in your own skin? And how do you want to show up in the world? We talk about how to create a signature style, you know, um, because you can change that at any time. And so a signature style is like kind of like your own personal branding, right? Part of my signature style is my, you know, crazy nails, my big hoop earrings, um, you know, my, my makeup style, my like heels, which I don't get to wear those very often these days, but you know what I'm saying? Like everybody has their own signature style. And so I teach the ladies how to create a signature style and how most importantly, how do you make yourself a priority and how do you create a self-care routine? Because a lot of this principle might seem like it's the physical, but it's more than that. It's deeper than that. Because the way that you show up and present yourself to the world says everything about how you're thinking and feeling about yourself. And there's just a difference, right? You know the feeling when you walk out the salon or the nail shop um, or you just got a new outfit and you're like feeling yourself, right? Like you just, you walk differently, you talk differently, you interact differently. That's what we're trying to achieve here. Versus... You know the day, you know the days, because we all do it, okay? You roll out of bed, you put your hair in the messy bun, or throw the hat on, throw the same old workout clothes on from, you know, yesterday, no makeup, 
and you're just like, your voice is just lower, your shoulders are hunched over, you just are at all costs avoiding eye contact with people because you just don't feel confident in what you look like. And you just kind of, you know, you're just, you're playing it small because you don't want anybody to see you that way. Versus, I'm going to get up, I'm going to take pride in my appearance, not when I lose the 50 pounds, but right now. And I'm going to put my face on, I'm going to do my hair, I'm going to put on an outfit that makes me feel cute, that makes me feel irresistible, that makes me feel good, and then I'm going to walk out the house. And your voice is different, your shoulders are back, your head is up high, you look people in the eyes, you smile at people, and that shit is contagious, okay? And so I always say, like, when you look good, you feel good, and when you feel good, you do good. And so Get Your Glam On is all about how to own the body you have right now, how to dress the body you have right now to feel the best that you can feel. Because we're not waiting until goal weight to feel a certain way. We're going to teach ourselves that no matter where we are on the journey, whether you're going to lose the weight or not, you're going to feel damn good about yourself. Because let, let me just see if this makes sense to you. For years, I thought, I can't practice that now. I can't practice self-love and self-worth and like confidence at this size because then I'll never lose the weight. Because I had this belief, this rule, that if I treated myself with respect, if I treated myself really good, I would get too comfortable and never want to lose the weight. Because I had the belief that you have to treat yourself like pure shit if you want to get the weight off. Because I was always approaching weight loss from a place of self-hatred. I would approach weight loss from, well, if you're not hustling and hurting and struggling down the scale, it's not going to work. And where the switch happened for me was when I decided the timeline has to go. We're not doing timelines anymore. Oh, I have to lose 50 pounds by September 1st. I have to lose 50 pounds by the cruise or whatever the hell it was. When I took the timeline off and said, I don't care, number one, I don't care if the weight comes off. Number two, I don't care how slowly the weight comes off because what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to teach myself the things that no diet ever taught me before. I'm going to teach myself how to have a relationship with me. I'm going to find out what I actually like to do that doesn't revolve around food, dieting, other people, and working because that's all I ever knew, okay? I'm going to learn how to have a relationship with me. I'm going to learn to listen to the thoughts that I have about myself, and I'm going to learn how to break those, and I'm going to learn how to be confident whether I get to my goal or not and how to start taking better care of myself, how to learn how to do my makeup better, how to learn how to dress for the body I have now, not just holding on to these stupid ass outfits that are never going to fit me in my closet. I mean, how many times did you buy the skinny clothes as a punishment or in your mind, it was a motivation, right? (laughs) Like, and then you never get there. So then you feel like a loser versus I'm going to, I deserve all of this now. And I don't care how long it takes to get the physical weight off. If I could fundamentally change the way that I think and feel about myself, if I could create the life I crave, then that's what matters. And that's what this program is. And that's how this program was born. was when I just decided there is no more timeline. You lose the weight, you lose the weight. You don't, you don't. It comes off when it comes off. And, You know, so many of you are obsessed with, I have to get this weight off by this date. And it's like, well, why? If you, if anybody could lose weight following a stupid ass plan in a temporary fashion, but if you already know that you've done that multiple times and the weight always comes back, why would you do it again? What if instead you could 
throw that timeline out the window and actually change the problems, actually lose the emotional weight that's actually holding you back so that you never had to lose the physical weight again because you could actually lose it in a way that came from a place of self-love and not (laughs) self-hatred. You know, it's just like changing the way we think about these things. It's like, if you want to feel empowered, confident, loved, worthy, but the things that you're trying are diets, pills, and extreme exercise, that's never going to be the solution. That's never going to be the solution. So I hope this was helpful to kind of learn more about Number one, the five things that traditional bullshit diets are not teaching you. But number two, to get more of a glimpse into the things that I teach inside of the Irresistible You program. So if that is something, again, that you want to explore, if you want to find out, if you're like, man, this is what I need, I want to get enrolled, I want to make sure I'm a good fit, If you just want to learn more and you want to get enrolled into the program, then I invite you again to join a free confidence clarity call. You can go to irresistibleicing.com slash call and schedule your free call there. You pick the date and time that works best for you, and then we will get on a phone call together. We will talk about your goals. We will talk about what it is you crave for yourself, and then determine if Irresistible You is a good fit. And if it is, I will invite you to enroll and join myself and the other Irresistible Ladies in the program. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, If you have direct questions or anything like that, you can post those in the free Facebook group. So the Facebook group, again, is the Irresistible You podcast discussion group. You can just search Irresistible You podcast in Facebook or click the link inside the show notes. Um, If you want to get more kind of behind the scenes where I share like little snippets of our coaching calls and things that are happening um, in my personal life as well, um, you can follow me on Instagram, which is at irresistible icing. I'm also kind of sharing some behind the scenes with this pregnancy and the move and all the things that are going on in my own life right now. So I um, thank you guys so much for listening. And also if the podcast is helping you in any, any type of way, I would love for you to go over to iTunes and leave a free rating and review. That would be just awesome. And it helps the podcast grow. It helps other women find the podcast um, by pushing it out into the iTunes algorithm. So Thank you so much for listening. This was a long one. Until the next one, stay irresistible. Bye, guys.